Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today you'll be using your wits to deceive and uncover deception by fellow players as you attempt to discover who among you is a werewolf. Ultimate Werewolf Extreme is a social deduction game that is a reimagined Ultimate Werewolf experience for 3 to 25 players. It takes 30 to 60 minutes to play, is for ages 14 and up, and published by Bezier Games. Today, we'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now, I've placed timestamps below me right in the description of this video just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Well, let's get started. In this interactive game of deduction, you'll be given a roll card and be on one of two teams. The villagers or the werewolves. The villagers don't know who the werewolves are. Nor will they know who the other villagers are. However, the werewolves will get to know who each other are. But they're trying to remain undiscovered while slowly eliminating the villagers. It's played over multiple rounds that consist of a night and day phase. Each night, the werewolves secretly eliminate one player. And each day, all players discuss who they think the werewolves are and why. The players vote to eliminate a single player, trying to find a werewolf in the process but they might end up eliminating a villager by mistake since the werewolves are trying to cleverly talk them into that. Each team has additional special roles like the seer, who looks for a werewolf each night to help the village team. Now the object of the game depends on which team you're on. If you're on the villagers team, you win if all the werewolves are eliminated. However, the werewolf team will win if at least half of the players in the game are werewolves. So let's talk a little bit about the flow of the game. Now the game requires a moderator, and that person will be responsible for setting up the room, choosing the right set of rules for your group, and explaining the game and answering questions, and I'll go over all of these later in the video. When selecting a moderator, if anyone has already been a moderator in the past for any of the Ultimate Werewolf games, that's a great choice. If no one has, if anyone's even played any of the Ultimate Werewolf games, that's also a great choice. If no one in the group has any experience with any of the Ultimate Werewolf games, then simply make the moderator the person who's the most experienced gamer. The game takes place over a series of game days and nights, and each day the players will be discussing who among them is a wolf and to vote out a player. Each night, the wolves will choose a player to eliminate while the seer learns if one player is a wolf or not. Now I'm going to go into the details of how you set the game up and how you select roles towards the end of this video, but let's first talk about getting people gathered. You'll want each game to be 20 players or less. If you have more than 20 players, it's better to split the group into multiple games, but each game will need one moderator to run it. And if you are splitting up a large group into multiple games, it's best that those games be played in different rooms, and the rooms that these are playing in should be as quiet as possible. Now you'll want to arrange the chairs in a circle, similar to how I have the cards laid out here, giving each player a few inches of space on either side of their chair. And if you're playing with people who don't know each other, it's best to provide name badges or stickers so people can see each other's names. Once you've secretly dealt each player a roll card, again we'll talk about building the deck for the game a little later, you'll want to remind players that their card is always to be kept secret, and you can say anything about your roll, but you can never show your card to anyone unless you, the moderator, tell them to. Now in the first night, the moderator is going to call out the roles of the wolves and the seer separately to find out which players are in those roles. The wolves will get to see each other, but the villagers won't wake up at all at night. So the moderator will go through a script like this. So they'll say, everyone in the village fall asleep. In other words, all players should close their eyes. Now after the moderator has checked to make sure that all players have closed their eyes, they'll say, wolves, Open your eyes and look for other wolves. And the wolves are going to be open their eyes and they're going to be doing this quietly so that nobody hears them. And using the notepad that was supplied with the game, the moderator can write the player's names and which roles they are. And obviously they want to keep the secret to any of the other players. And once the moderator has seen that they've all made eye contact and they know who each other are, they'll say, wolves, close your eyes. Now they'll pause a little bit, then they'll say, seer. Open your eyes and point to a player. 
Now, since the wolves have their eyes closed and so do the normal villagers, the seer will open their eyes and silently point to a player. Now, the moderator will give a thumbs up if that target player is a wolf and a thumbs down if they are not a wolf. Then they'll say, seer, close your eyes. They'll then pause to make sure that's done. And then they'll say, everyone wakes up to find that the wolves have overrun your once peaceful village. It's up to you to find and eliminate those wolves. All players open their eyes. Now, during the first day, you'll introduce the players by going around the circle and having them say something about themselves. This could be as simple as, my name's Bob and I'm a villager. And it might be something more elaborate, such as, I'm Bob, the village donut maker, and as everyone knows, werewolves don't like donuts. Now, players should not claim to be a wolf or the seer. Players with those roles should hide their true identity and should instead claim to be a simple villager. Now, players can say anything they like, but again, they can never show their roll card to anyone. Now, after the players have introduced themselves, the moderator describes how to nominate someone to be eliminated because they suspect that player is a wolf. So they'll say something like, to nominate a player for elimination, point at them and say, I nominate Bob. Now, if another player seconds the nomination, Bob will be able to defend themselves and then will vote. Thumbs up to stay or thumbs down to eliminate. If you eliminate a player, their role will be revealed to everyone and the village will fall asleep immediately. If not, you'll continue discussions until the next accusation. Now, the way this actually works is if more than half of the players vote thumbs down on a player, then that player is eliminated. So in this case, with nine players, you'd need to have five thumbs down for a player to be eliminated. Now, if that player is eliminated, they may not speak once their card is revealed and they should leave the circle, but they should stick around to silently watch the rest of the game. Now, the moderator should set a predetermined time limit on the length of the first day, such as five minutes. And if no one's been eliminated by then, the village falls asleep immediately. And be sure to inform the village when the time's almost up. Now, every night after the first night, the moderator calls the wolves and has them point to the player that they'd like to eliminate, but the wolves must all agree on their target. So it's important for the wolves to be doing this quietly because they don't want anyone to hear them moving around or mouthing things, but let's say they all agree that this one they wanted to eliminate. Then the moderator will have everyone go to sleep and they'll have just the seer open their eyes and they'll have them point to any player. So for example, the seer might open their eyes and they might point quietly to this player. And again, since everyone's eyes closed except the seer, the moderator will give that seer a thumbs up if that player that that seer pointed to was a wolf or thumbs down if it's not. Then they'll have the seer close their eyes and then they'll have everybody wake up, which brings you to the next day. And at the start of every day, the moderator will announce the player that's eliminated by the wolves in that previous night, and they'll show that card to all players. In this case, this player was killed. They pointed out they'd show everyone this card. Again, this player is eliminated. They should stay close by, but they must be silent. And this flow will continue going through every night and every day until either all the people on the werewolf team are eliminated. In that case, the village team wins or at least half of the remaining players are on the werewolf team and then that team wins. So let's give the moderator some tips on how to create the best experience for those that are playing and then we'll get into how you actually build the teams and the specific roles. Now as the moderator, your role is critical but you're the least important quote unquote player in the game. It's your job to make sure that each of the other players feel that they are critical to the outcome of the game and you should be invisible during the day, only helping to facilitate voting and to resolve issues. Now, when explaining the game to new players, it's important that you go over the high level concepts that I've already covered here, like that there's a village with wolves in it, and you go over the winning condition for each team. You'll talk about the basic day and night flow, and then the rules about the nighttime, rules about elimination, and the different roles that are in the game. You also must make sure that they all know that eliminated players must be quiet and leave that area. Make sure you take questions from any of the players because there's some things during gameplay that can't be talked about that have specific things to do with roles. As the moderator, you want to keep the game moving. If conversation starts to falter, you want to encourage accusations, but you want to be careful not to add any of your own editorial opinions or information that could be interpreted by the players to provide the identities of any of the roles. 
Now it's best to use a timer with a short time limit for each of the day's discussion, and you can use the free Ultimate Werewolf Timer app to help facilitate this. But you should also know that people that are involved in a heated debate, you probably want to let the discussions continue for a little while, even if the day is a little longer than usual. Now each night when you're calling out the roles, be sure to walk around the players, changing directions often. Be sure not to speak to anyone directly because you don't want anyone to know who you're talking to. Also try to take different amounts of time between your requests so the players can't deduce anything from how long it took to do any action. Also, be very careful to refrain from any gender-based pronouns like he and she and his and hers because those can give information to the group that would be unfair if you happen to be accurate. Now, this is a great team building exercise when played properly. It's a great way to get to know people on a team that doesn't normally have a great amount of interaction and a fun way for a team to build relationships on a personal level. Now, it can be played in meetings, following presentations, as a part of larger workshops, and as a refreshing break from back-to-back -back seminars, education programs, or corporate training. Now, building the deck for the game can be a very fun exercise for the moderator, as you'll be selecting which roles are in the game. Now, so far, we're teaching you the basics of the game. I've been showing you the villager, the seer, and the werewolf, as these are the three most basic roles in the game. So for example, if you were playing a five player game, you'd have three plain villagers, one village support. Notice the color of this matches the one in the seer, and you'd have one plain wolf, which is just a single werewolf in this case. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the fence post, there's a number, seven for the seer, one for the villager, minus six for the werewolf. Once you add up all the numbers and all the cards, the more positive the number is, the easier it will be for the villager team. The more negative the total number is, the easier it will be for the werewolf team, and the closer to zero you'll get, the more balanced it will be for both sides. So depending on your player count, you'll take a certain amount of cards from these different types of roles. Now as the moderator, you also can decide how to tilt the game. For example, if your group contains many people who don't know each other, the wolf team will usually have an advantage. So you can add about a plus five points worth of special roles in order to balance the game. However, if your group contains mostly experienced players that have played any of the Ultimate Werewolf games before, then the wolves need a boost and the balance should be a negative number for that group. Also, when choosing village support, you always want to have exactly one seer in the game. This was the basic one, which we showed you earlier. It helps you know, learn if a player is a werewolf or not. Now, there are other types of seers, and regardless of which one you choose, always just choose one type of seer because a seer needs to be as part of the village support, but the type of seer that is, you get to decide. Now let's look at another village support role, the hunter, because if you're eliminated, you immediately eliminate another player. And certain roles like this will do different things to the game. For example, the hunter shortens the game and adds uncertainty to the win condition. And the Ligon can also shorten the game and add uncertainty to the win condition because they're on the village team, but they appear to the seer as a wolf, which means they might be talking it up trying to get this person removed even though they're actually part of the village support. There's also some really powerful roles, like the witch, if used properly, because once per game, you may save or eliminate a player during the night. Now, if you don't want to select the roles yourself, you can download the free companion app, which will help you select the roles, but it will also help you keep track of which players are which roles. Now, we've made a separate video specifically for how to use the moderator app, and the link for that video is in the description below. The roles in the rules have extra information about the roles that isn't covered on the cards. That information is useful whether you use the app or not. Also, once you're experienced with the game, on pages 3 and 4, you'll see many different rules variations that you might want to try out with your group. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Ultimate Werewolf Extreme faster than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I've placed a link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them, since I'll be notified, but so also will Bezier Games.